Hello YouTube! Today we're going to build an inexpensive and effective LED light fixture for an aquarium. This fixture will be 5 foot long and 120 watts for a planted tank. However, you could of course make it any length you require, and if you swap out the 640 nanometer red LEDs for a tinic blue, it makes a great reef light. Let's jump right in. Here are the supplies needed. The fixture is made from 1 inch square aluminum tube that you can pick up at your orange hardware store. I'll use two LED drivers, 120 volt AC, 600 milliamp constant current DC. These each support up to 30 3 watt LEDs. Remember that LEDs can vary in forward voltage by color, and since I want red and white, I need two drivers. If you use all white or blue and white, you could use a single driver. I'll use 40 3 watt LEDs, 20 white and 20 red, and we'll use a single 120 volt 60 millimeter fan to keep the unit cool. Lastly, you'll need some screws, epoxy, a power cord, wire, and wire nuts. Always start with a sketch or plan. It's easier to cut and drill than undrill and reattach. You can see here that I debated two different layouts. One with 58 LEDs spaced 2 inches apart, and a second with 40 spaced 3 inches apart. With a cooling fan, I've had good success with even 1.5 inch spacing, but it does run a little warm. I decided that 175 watts may be a bit much, and I went with the 40 LED build. This is right at the low edge of the supported voltage for the red LEDs on this driver, and I did end up adding one more in the middle. Once you've worked out the dimensions, transfer it to your square tube aluminum. I like to bevel the edges so the hot air lifts up and away from the tank more than if it was at a 90 degree. Mark the length, measure and mark the locations where you'll mount the ballasts, put a 55 millimeter square in the middle to cut out for the fan. Mark the screw holes for wires to pass through and for attaching any harnesses or trim. Now we cut the tube to length and cut our bevels. You can cut this with a hacksaw or with an angle grinder. I've used both in the past, but this metal cutoff saw is very nice for this type of work. Make sure to wear safety goggles, and if you can find your gloves, those are nice to wear also. With the length cut and beveled, I use the saw to start the cuts for the fan hole. Unfortunately, I can't make all four cuts in the saw, so I pull out the angle grinder. Finish cutting a square off the top of each tube with the angle grinder. Note, on what will be the outside of each tube, make a cut from the top. On the inside edge, cut from the side so that they make sort of a hollow area when they're put together. This will be clear in a moment. With the angle grinder, I go ahead and grind down some of the sharp edges. It's also good to come in with a file and clean them up a bit. Now, take an eighth inch drill bit and drill all the holes that you've marked. This is ideal for most of the screw mounts, but for the wire runs, I'll open them up larger. It's always best to start with a small bit and work up when working with metal. Aluminum's fairly soft though, so an eighth inch is pretty small. Now tape the tubes together. A bit of masking tape does a good job here, and it lets us get them lined up to drill the holes we'll need to bolt it together, tubes together. This needs to be large enough for the screw head to pass through. I use a bit of blue tack to attach the screw to the screwdriver. Then I thread it into the wide hole and tighten it up, attaching the tubes together. And now we can remove the tape. I use the ballast as a guide to drill the mounting holes. Once that's done, the metal fabrication is complete. Okay, let's attach the LEDs. I'm just using JB Weld here. There are better choices with better thermal conduction, but this does work. If you run the LEDs at full throttle, you'll want a very good heat conductive glue. 
I'm underpowering these a bit at 600 milliamps, so this is fine. You can also use screws and spacers to attach the LEDs. It makes them very easy to repair and replace that way. But you gotta drill and tap two holes per LED and buy all the screws and spacers. When mounting, I found it's a good idea to orient the LEDs all in the same direction. It makes it less confusing when doing the wiring, so I place the positive side towards me for each LED. Then a tiny dab of epoxy is placed where the LED needs to be mounted. Put it in place and press firmly, wiggling it back and forth. You want to use a very thin layer to attach them and this helps spread it even. Also make sure to test each one before gluing it in place. Once the epoxy sets, they're pretty permanently attached. A multimeter set to check resistance is usually enough to see if the bulb lights. When done, let the epoxy set overnight before wiring. Now let's wire it up. I cut 44 inch sections of wire stripped and tinned at the ends. Then I thread four longer wires through the hole, one to each tube opening. I'll have both positive terminals on the right and the negatives on the left. This means that one pair will cross in the center from if you're looking through the top hole. So when soldering, just run the jumpers from positive to negative, 40 times. I alternate red and white so there's some crossover needed. I want all the reds together in one ballast and all the whites on the other. I find it easiest to first tin the pad on the LED star and then just melt the tinned end of the wire in place. It eliminates the need for more than two hands, which I don't have. With that done, I flip the unit over, trim the wires to length, and solder the plugs to attach the ballasts. To attach the ballast, I thread the AC power lines through the larger hole in the side of the tube. Then I bolt the ballasts in place using the holes that we drilled before. I'll also add a large piece of heat shrink tube to the AC wires to keep them from shorting on the aluminum frame where the hole is. This lamp is a gift, and I know it'll be set on top of the tank rather than suspended from cables, so to give it something to set on rather than the bulbs, I sand down some one and a half inch by quarter inch oak trim, cut to the same five foot length as the fixture. This is attached to the bottom half of each side, lifting it up about an inch off the glass tops, and looking pretty good. For now, I'm leaving it unstained, so he can choose the color and add stain and sealer at a later time to match the room. Now we attach the cooling fan. Using large threaded screws, this should just grip onto the sides of the fixture. The 60 millimeter fan has screw holes that just work out well for this. Place the fan so that it blows into the hole cut in the tubes. The last step is to add the power plug. Twist the hot wires from both ballasts and fan together, then attach the hot line from your power line and apply an electrical nut. Repeat this with the neutral lines. Apply some electrical tape to keep it all together. It's a good idea to protect this wire junction in some way. I'm using a small box I salvaged off a broken Christmas decoration. Unfortunately, it's the switch that was broken, or I'd have wired it in as a switch for the lamp. If you buy a cord at the hardware store, you might prefer one with a switch in line. However, if you cut and save the cords off any broken devices before throwing them away, you'll never have to buy one. Here it is in action. This is a high power and sturdy fixture for a fraction of the cost. The LEDs are tuned perfectly for plant growth while still showing off the color well. I've built many and had few issues. Occasionally, a baluster bulb will go out, every few years. If you keep an extra ballast and a few extra LEDs handy, you'll have it up and running again in under 15 minutes most of the time. I hope you found this useful. Drop me a line in the comments if you build your own or if you have any questions. There are links in the doobly-doo for suggestions on where to find some of the materials. Please click like and subscribe to see more projects like this, and until next time, thanks for watching.